عن تاب بن ابن رباح رضي الله تعالى عنه قال بلغني ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قرا ياسين في صدر النهار قضيت حوائجه. وقطع بن ابي رباح رضي الله عنه رايت في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever eats surah yaseen in the beginning of the day all his needs for that day are fulfilled. وقطع بن ابي رباح رضي الله عنه رايت في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم whoever eats surah yaseen in the beginning of the day all his needs for that day are fulfilled. Many merits of Surah Yasin are mentioned in a hadith. In a hadith, he said everything has a heart, and the heart of the glorious Quran, Surah Yasin. Whoever reads Surah Yasin, Allah Almighty records for him a reward equal to that of reading the whole Quran ten times. Whoever reads Surah Yasin, Allah records for him a reward equal to that of reading the Quran ten times. According to another hadith, Almighty Allah recited Surah Yasin and Surah Taha 1,000 years before the creation of heaven and earth. And of hearing this, the angel said, the Blessing is for the Ummah unto whom the Quran will be sent down. The blessing is for the hearts that will bear it, memorize it, and blessing is for the tongues that will recite it. They are the divine like this. Whoever reads Surah Yasin for the pleasure of Allah only, all his earlier sins are forgiven. Therefore make a practice of reading this Surah over your dead. According to one hadith of Yasin, his name is Torah as Mun'ima, giver of good things, because it contains benefits for its readers, and this life as well as the hereafter. It removes from him the afflictions of this world and the next, and it takes away the dread of the, the next life. This surah is also known as Rafiya Khafila that which exalts the status of the believers and degrades the unbelievers. According to a riwayah, Rasulullah said, my heart desires that Surah Yasin should be present in the heart of every one of my ummah. According to another hadith, if anybody recites Surah Yasin every night and then he dies, he dies as a shaheed. Rasulullah said that my heart desires that Surah Yasin should be, should be present in the heart of every one of my ummah. According to another hadith, if anybody recites Surah Yasin every night and then dies, he dies as a shaheed. When an Asim Nudi Allah one who called the Khara Ramadan, the father of Sulullah Shalasim, in the Hal Shah, called the Hadar of Mufi Layla to Mukhayu Munal Fishah, when Hulima, when Hulima, for Hal Hulima Khayl Kulu, Wala Yuharamu, Khayraha, Illa Mahroom. Anas radiallahu anhu reports that once Rasulullah s.a.w. Ramadan came, the Prophet s.a.w. said, A month has barely dawned upon you, wherein lies a night, better than one thousand months. Whoever is deprived of its blessings has indeed been deprived of almost all good, and none is deprived of its good except he who is completely unfortunate. Once Rasulullah s.a.w. on the coming of Ramadan said, A month has barely dawned upon you, wherein lies a night, better than 1,000 months. Whoever is deprived of its blessing has indeed deprived of almost all good, and none is deprived of its good except he who is completely unfortunate. Certain surahs, certain ayats have significance. And he starts to mention it. And his, his desire was that every morning, every morning should have in his heart Surah Yasin. Surah Yasin is not very difficult to learn. If you read, if you recite Surah Yasin every day for one month, those who are not familiar with you, for one month, every day they, they recite Surah Yasin. The second month, they can start learning every day two ayats, maximum three ayats. 
within six months they will have learned Surya. That's a long time. That's a long time. Six months is a long time to learn Surya. But if you try to gain, once you learn Surya, then Allah will give you tawfiq to learn Surya Mulk. Once you learn Surya Mulk, then Allah will give you tawfiq to learn Surya Waqiyah. Once you learn Surya Waqiyah, then you'll want to learn Surya Kaaf. And slowly, slowly, you will start learning Quran. But if you don't, then your whole lifetime will pass, you will not learn Qulaubun Ibn Nas. Whole lifetime will pass. Once we went to an Ishtima in Orlando, I think. We do Halaqa of Quran. In the Halaqa of Quran, we only recite the last 10 surahs. There were grown men there in their late thirties, forties, fifties. They couldn't read Qutbullah. Some of them couldn't read Qutbullah. They weren't Muslims. They weren't Muslim who became Muslim last year or this year. These were all born Muslims. They came from Muslim families. But they didn't even know Qutbullah. I was shocked when I sat in that hour. That grown men and don't know for Allah wa Qulabra bil Farah, Qulabra bil Nas. They don't pray, that's right. Once I was in Hajj, we were in Mina, so we did Halaqa. So in the Halaqa you find out that how people are. They come to Hajj, but they don't know Surah Fatiha properly. They come to Hajj, but they don't know Qulab Rabbi Farak for Rabbi Nas. That's when you realize that if you don't have ta'aluk with the Qur'an, it won't come to you. No matter whose son you are, no matter whose daughter you are. Qur'an, Allah gives to those who want them. Allah gives Qur'an to those who want it. That's why Sayyidina Amr radiya Allah ta'ala who said, Inna Allah yarfa'u bihaad al-Qur'an aqwaman wa yarfa'u biha aqwaman. Allah ta'ala ta'ala raises because of this Qur'an people. And Allah puts down people because of this Qur'an. Those who, who disregard it, yeah, Allah has no use for it. And those who want to have Qur'an, then Allah raises them. Allah raises them. Quran is the Kitab of Allah. So look at it. <coughs> Try to learn it. Allah Taala will put it into the hearts that need it. I think I mentioned it before also. That when I was a young child, about 12 years old, we were in Hibs class in, in England, in the madrasa. So we used to have a I still remember his name. His name was Muhammad Malik. He was a Pathan. So he came to do hymns. So he had an elder brother who his father put for hymns. He ran. He didn't do hymns. He went to it. He put Muhammad Malik. He did a few Jews and he went to Wales. Then he put the youngest son. He did a few Jews and he went to Wales. Nobody became happy. So Khan Sab then thought, if they don't become Hafiz, I will become Hafiz. After the age of 48, 50, he became Hafiz of Quran. He became Hafiz. He tried his sons, they didn't become Hafiz, so he said, no problem. I'm still a Pathan. I'm Hafiz of Quran. So he became a Hafiz. MashaAllah, he used to lead Tarawi. I don't know if he's still alive. I'm talking about quite a few years back, 30 years. But he was, he became Hafiz. So Allah Taala, he doesn't look at your age also. It's good that a young child become Hafiz because it's easier when you're young to memorize. But that doesn't mean that somebody who's in their 40s and 50s cannot memorize. If they, 
If they start, they make the effort, they will memorize also. And people do memorize, even today. They become half is of Quran. Huh? Did you have to memorize you will start? I saw a guy in Masri Nur. One day he came up to me and said, Let me do Taraweeh. Uh-huh. He said, When are you going to let me do Taraweeh? So he said, When did you become Hafiz? He said, I became Hafiz myself. And he said, That's no warranty. Can you become a doctor yourself without going to medical school? No. If you say Quran, also you have to go by an Ustad who will teach you. If you have mistakes, you will take them out. <clears throat> this is the Sunnah of Rasulullah 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 taught the Sahaba Quran. Abdullah ibn Masood, Obey ibn Kaab, these people, they were the Qurra of this Sunnah. But they decided to Rasulullah Rasulullah. Abdullah ibn Masood said one Rasulullah Rasulullah told me to read. I started reading from Surah Al-Nisa and when he reached the ayat was it not from Shahida? He said, the Prophet asked told me to stop when I looked, he was crying. So, okay, if he's like it, not from Shahidah. Shahida. Then, Ubayyid Nekam, Rabbi Allah, the Prophet asked told me that we sign Quran. He said, I have to, he said, Allah has come and we need to listen to it. So Quran is recited and learned from Sunnah. So my dear brothers, we have the opportunity. If we can't become half of the whole Quran, that doesn't matter. We can learn certain surahs of the Quran, which every day use Surah Yasin, Surah Tabarak. Now how is it every day used? That when we die, if Azadi Kabul comes upon us, if we had learned Surah Mulk and recited Surah Mulk every night, then Surah Mulk will fight on our behalf. And Allah Ta'ala will uplift the Azad because of Surah Mulk. Uh, so learn Surah Mulk. It's not that hard. Learn Surah Mulk. Surah Yasin, Peace Asim said, whatever. Your whole day's ma'amlat will become easy. We see, we hear this, but we make no effort. And it's up to us. That if you want to make an effort, the Elohim Qadr will come in the next 10 nights. I don't know which night it will be, Allah knows this. But those who will make effort, they will gain. And those like me who will just sleep through, Let's just sleep through like every day. Nothing. Anaki al-Ayyotul Qadr is khayyum min al It's better than 83 years and 4 months of ibadat. If Allah gave us the age of 83 years and 4 months, we would do ibadat without any break. That much we can do in one night. Look at that is warranty. Your ibadat is warranty. Allah warranties. People look at it because they can't see the sawab and ajar. So they don't really give much thought to it. Illa mashallah, some people do. But generally people ignore it. They say we'll do it, it doesn't matter, we'll do it next year when we become old. How do you know you're going to become old? Do it while it's your young. If you are young, do it now. If you are old, don't wait for next year. You don't know if you'll be alive or not. Mm-hmm. Today in the morning, after Fajr, I came right? home. I got the news, another cousin died. Another cousin of mine died yesterday morning. After Fajr, out and Fajr, in that time, and then the message came that in two hours he will be buried. His brother died three, four days. Allah is showing us. And he wasn't old. The one who died also was not old. 
All his older brothers are alive. All the sisters are all alive, alive. So it doesn't mean that you will become old to die. You can die tomorrow young also. Allah does not know. Allah doesn't have a list that only if you go over 60 you will die. No. And Malakul Maud doesn't know who he has to collect until the hukum comes. Once Malakul Maud was asked that have you ever been to a place to take a road where you felt sorry for the person? So he said yes. It happened once in my life that Allah commanded me to go and take the soul of the mother of that baby who was on a, in the ocean, the middle of the ocean. The baby and the mother were the only one alive. The ship had broken into parts. Everybody had died. So they were hanging on to the mother and the baby were on a small piece of wood floating. And Allah commanded me, now go and take the mother's life. So Malakul Maud said that I had tears in my eyes when I took her life because I saw the baby. How will the baby survive in the ocean? Vast ocean and a small baby. He said, then after so many years, Shaddad, who made the hanging gardens of Babylon, in Iraq, even Western civilization agreed that there was something called the hanging gardens of Babylon. He made Jannah in this world. He, he actually made Jannah like Jannah. And he had palaces built inside one brick of silver, one brick of gold. It took him many years to build it. He had well, the Nabi of that time to describe to him how Jannah is. And he had it planned and everything exactly like that. And when his Jannah was complete, he was boasting to everybody and now I'm going to take you into my Jannah. You talk about the Jannah of Allah. Look at my Jannah. So his horse's front two hooves were inside the entrance and the back was and the Nabi of Allah was telling him, whoever the Nabi was at that time, that don't have kibar inside you. But he thought, Ana Rabbukum ala, who's greater than me? Bodhi thought the same thing. Modi uh, thought the same thing. That Anarak Bukumunala. Trump thought the same thing. They all think the same thing. Well, MBS same thinks the same thing. Anarak Bukumunala. Hasina uh, same thinks the same thing. Anarak Bukumunala. Allah shows them when the time comes. So when the horse went in, the front hooves, Malakul Mat was told, take his soul. Malakul Maud came down and Malakul Maud had tears in his eyes because he's thinking that this man, Allah did not give him the opportunity to see his Jannah. Allah, Allah did not give him the opportunity to see his Jannah. As soon as he front hooves went in, Ram, he was off his horse, dead on the ground. So Allah Ta'ala told Malakul Maud, Malakul Maud, you had Raham on this guy. He said, yes. He said, you had Raham on that baby from the ocean. He said, yes. He said, it's the same baby. This is the same baby. This one was Shaddad. This was Shaddad. Allah killed him. Because he thought this. So nobody knows when that time will come. The Quran is something that will help us in this world also and in the hereafter. Quran, it will help us in all our, our needs. The needs of this world and the needs of the hereafter also. So listen to Quran, learn Quran. Whatever amount of Quran, learn it. Don't think that I cannot learn or I don't need to learn. We all need to learn. Thirty years ago, when these, you remember that when the first mobile phones came out, they were like to use bricks. You have to dial, doom, doom, doom. Who would have 
thought that we will be using them for our banking, for everything, for our... And now, even the babies, before they speak, they know how to touch that. Before they speak, they know how to go onto the internet. If you give the baby the phone, he's happy. If you give him a toy, he cries. <laughs> he looks at the phone. He wants the phone. He don't want the toy. Like all of us. We all want the phone. If we could, we could, in Salah, we could watch the phone, we would watch the phone also. And then pray. So my dear brothers, Quran, Alhamdulillah, many of us do have downloaded apps of the Quran on the phone, but sometimes pick up the Quran. Pick up the Quran. That's ibadat. Picking up the phone is not ibadat. You pick up the phone, you don't need wuzu. You pick up this Quran, you need wuzu. So which is ibadat? This one. Some people say we don't need to have Quran anymore. We can pray it in our home. No, we need Quran. And touching the Quran. This is the Kalam of Allah. Look at it. Even if you don't know how to read it, look at it. Looking at it is sawab. Like if we have parents, looking at our parents is sawab. Serving them is a greater honor. But just making dua for them is something else. But people don't, they don't have this concept, especially the younger generation. They think my parents are old fashioned. They don't know what I know. They know what you don't know. When you will become their age, then you will say, why did I not listen to them on that thing? Some people think that their parents don't know anything about God. Maybe they don't. But what they know, you don't know. Ah, the experience. My younger friends. Make dua for your parents. Allah give them barakah in their life, in their health, in their wealth, in their iman. If you make dua, then your next generation will make dua for you. In, in the West, in some places, when a girl gets married, in Muslim community, in Desi community, they ask that do you have garbage bags at home? You know who they're referring to as garbage bags? Not what, who. They are referring to the garbage bag as the parents. Ah, but do you have garbage bags at home? Somebody told me that. So what? Yeah, they refer to the parents as garbage bags. This is in Muslim households. So the, your parents are your garbage bags? Ah. Allah said that respect your elders, your parents. He doesn't say even if your parents are not Muslim, you have to still respect them. Nowadays they say, I know more than my parents do. But what they don't know is how the parents, how they cry in their night and in their daytime, they make dua to Allah that, oh Allah, look after my children. They don't know this. Until they will become parents and when they will have children, then they will realize. So, those of us who have parents, serve them. If they are alive, look after them. Those whose parents have died, you have not lost everything. Make dua for them. Rabbi rahamhuma kamara
ربي يرحمهم دو صدقہ ہم نے بھی کہا دو خیر ہم نے بھی کہا When you do sadaqah on their behalf, when you do khair on their behalf, they will get ajr and you will get ajr also. SubhanAllah. And now I come to the crunch. Ibrahim is fine. And he's thinking, when are we going to start taraweeh? Don't worry, we have all night. <laughs> the crunch is now that you have an opportunity. Uh, the masjid needs your help. So, if you can, give on behalf of your parents. We need 800 people to give a thousand dollars. Our course is finished. So, do we start fundraising tonight? There are some masjid they need fundraising tonight. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to start fundraising. Inshallah, on the 27th night, we will finish for us. Saturday night. Saturday night. Next Saturday. Twenty seventh night, inshallah, we finish Quran. After we finish Quran, then we will do fundraising. So now I'm telling you now, you can bring your credit cards on Saturday night. You can bring your checkbooks on Saturday night. You can bring your cash on Saturday night. So inshallah, and the, the mitai on that night will be from, the mitai on that night is from Abhishek's father. No, no, this is not, this is from Abhishek's father. Abhis Farhan's father. Biryani from Biryani. No, no, no. no. <laughs> biryani, okay, no problem. If it's biryani, too many people, it's no problem. No, Mithai is from... Mithai is okay. Khedul Dedo. Yeah, no, Nasi Bari is going to be sponsored. Khedul Dedo. No, no. Subsequently, bad to you, Alhamdulillah, our local Hafiz, who became Hafiz in our masjid, the is going to finish the Quran. Alhamdulillah. This is an honor for all of us. That Alhamdulillah we are producing Huffaz now. And our Huffaz are doing Tarawi in our masjid. Inshallah next year there will be more. But Alhamdulillah he will finish Quran, entire Quran in this masjid, in Tarawi. We haven't even done his, what do you call it? Graduation yet. Yeah, good. We will yeah, do the graduation for him after everything becomes clear. Yeah. But the biggest graduation is that he's going to finish Quran in the masjid. Yeah, when is graduation, I'm going to sponsor. Huh? I'm going to sponsor the whole thing. Inshallah. 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 Inshallah.